Hello, my name is Jürgen Schulz from UCSD, from the Cal IT2 Institute. And today I'm going to give the first lecture of six lectures on Covice and how to use Covice to create virtual worlds. I want to say a few words about myself. I'm a research scientist here at the Cal IT2 Center, and I do virtual reality research. I've been doing this for over 10 years now. Uh, my degree is in computer science, and I've done a lot of work with user interfaces in 3D virtual environments. Rendering, volume rendering is one of the bigger things I've done. That was for my, uh, for my PhD thesis. And I have been doing research in virtual reality here at Cal IT2 for uh, about four and a half years now. So the um, overview of this course is there are six lectures. And we're going to go over several topics within Covice and how to use it to create virtual environments. Today, we're going to get an overview of what Covice is all about, what we can do with it. And we're going to go up to a point where we can run simple examples with it. And, um, and you can all do that with your own computers because the software is online. And I'll show you how to get there and how to do this. So to get started, I want to talk a little bit about what is Covice and what can it be used for. So Covice, the word Covice stands for Collaborative Visualization and Simulation Environment. And the original Covice software was developed at the University of Stuttgart in Germany, where I was a, a graduate student for five years. And um, uh, even at the time that I got there, which was in 1999, uh, they had already started developing Covice, and it was already uh, a, a working version for it. So this is a project that's been going on for uh, about 15 years. Now, what can it be used for? The major uh, target um, application of Covice has been engineering applications. The, among the first types of visualization that were done with it were vector field visualization, um, isosurface visualization. You can see some of that in the, in the picture right here. Um, there's the, this is a, an isosurface field, and it's done in Covice with the virtual reality renderer. And you can see a little animation there. And um, this kind of application is useful for all kinds of engineering subjects. For, for instance, thermodynamics. You can use it in mechanical engineering, uh, chemical engineering. And um, there are a lot of other topics that Covice was originally designed for, including oil and gas, the oil and gas industry. A major target application area has always been for Covice, the um, automotive industry. And that's why you'll see a lot of tools in Covice that are geared towards the automotive industry. But we've also used it for a lot of other um, domains, which I'm going to tell you about later. The, uh, um, the basic idea is that Covice can do both visualization, and it can also do the interaction with your data. And um, it also has a component where you can distribute, say, a simulation component um, to run on a supercomputer and then link that up directly to the visualization. So it's simulation and visualization. And it's collaborative, so that you can, which means you can link up mul multiple sites together in order to um, have multiple scientists or engineers work together on the same data. And we've done this in the past. Uh, many times very successfully. And that's one of the unique features of this particular um, software framework. Now, um, let me talk a little bit about the various virtual reality environments that we use here at Cal IT2 and um, which uh, Covice can run in. So one of them is a single screen environment. You can see here on the slide that there is a, a protein structure on this display. And this is a single flat screen display. There are really two screens, but they're directly adjacent to one another. And this setup, this particular setup, is driven by two computers. But you can just as well drive it with one computer. The beauty of the uh, Covice software is that it doesn't matter how many computers drive the environment. It's, Covice is just as happy with one computer as it is with 50. And um, it can also support virtual reality hardware. And then uh, that means uh, user interface hardware, which is, in this case, we have 3D glasses. These are passive glasses here. And there's a, a wired uh, tracking system. In this case, it's the Ascension flock of birds system. 
But it can also interface with pretty much all the major virtual reality uh, um, user interfaces that you can that you can imagine. And at CalIT, we use a lot of um, um, systems that have uh, optical that use optical tracking. They're based on camera tracking and infrared light, and they work wirelessly and work very accurately too. Now, uh, Covis can also drive tiled displays, tiled display walls, to do either mono or stereo visualization. In this case, we're looking at a, um, this is our barrier display here at CalIT. Barrier stands for variable barrier, and this is technology which was originally developed at EVL, the Electronic Visualization Lab in Chicago. And this um, barrier display is an auto stereoscopic display which can generate three-dimensional images um, without, for the user without having to wear glasses. So you can actually see a 3D image, kind of like a hologram, um, on these images. It does require a tracking system, though. You can see the user here uh, is wearing some headgear and is also uh, holding a, a joystick in their hand to operate the system with. And this system is driven by Covice again. Uh, and in this case, we use 15 computers to drive the 60 displays. And plus one, this is plus 15 plus one computer as a head node, which is used to control the entire uh, system, the cluster. So in this case, we have a matrix of flat panel displays. These can be stereo displays, like in this case, or they can be regular uh, mono screens, like regular LCD panels. And the interaction can happen either with a sophisticated 3D input system, tracked input system like this, or you could even run on a cluster just with a mouse and a keyboard, in which case you would lose head tracking and you would lose the ability to interact in 3D. But you could still run it that way. And we've successfully done that at trade shows, for instance, where we didn't have the space or we just couldn't uh, in, uh, put a tracking system on the display wall, which is, uh, happens particularly often when your display wall is rather small and you don't have that space, maybe either in front of the display wall or around it to mount the hardware. Um, the other reason, of course, to not use a 3D tracking system is that you might want to avoid the expense. Now, um, to go one step even higher than a tiled display wall when it comes to immersion, um, we use the, uh, a cave environment here at CalIT2. And the cave environment we use here is called the Star Cave. And cave stands for um, Cave Automated Virtual Environment. It's actually a recursive definition. And the cave was originally invented by researchers at the University of Illinois in Chicago, the Electronic Visualization Lab. And this cave environment um, was originally designed to be a six-wall cube, uh, or at least a few of the faces of the cube, in order to make an immersive environment. Now what we've done here at CalIT2 is we've built, and that was under the direction of um, uh, Professor DeFanti, who designed the uh, this five-walled system which deviates from the original cube-shaped cave system quite a bit. It's five walls, and you can see that in the images here, um, five walls, and there's an opening at the top because we need that to project onto the floor. And the, the five walls, each of them are subdivided into three screens, um, which are all at slight angles to one another. And, um, and uh, uh, Tom DeFanti and uh, Greg Daw developed this a couple of years ago, and we built it here at CalIT2. And uh, we've since used it um, for uh, many, many demonstrations and application development. So this is a system which is driven by um, a cluster of computers again, much like a tiled display wall. We use 17 computers to render. We have one head node, which controls the system. Um, each of the rendering nodes has two graphics cards, so that each card can address a projector separately. And um, in this case, we have 15 screens plus the floor. And that means that we use 34 projectors to create the images. And these projectors are HD quality um, projectors. So we render about 70 million um, pixels every single frame. Now, um, when it comes to Covice, now we're going back to the software. Um, Covice was originally developed to do uh, the visualization of simulations. And in order to do that, 
the first iteration of Kovice didn't even have anything to do with virtual reality. And it was completely based on desktop-based visualization. And um, in Kovice, when you first start up Kovice with the Kovice command, you'll see on your screen the map editor. The map editor is this application on the left over here. And at first, when you first start it up, this area of the screen is going to be empty. What you see here are a bunch of modules. But when you first run it, you won't see anything there. What you will see is on the left-hand side, you will see a list of modules that you can choose from. And these modules are from um, are, from, are organized into different uh, uh, categories with respect to what they do. For instance, there are there are I/O modules which are there to load or to save data from disk or to disk, and other types of modules are filters which can filter the data that's loaded. And um, and then we can also see other uh, data for, for instance, for the coloring or for um, to merge data together. Uh, there are all kinds of modules that can that can treat the data and, and limit it to fit into our rendering engine, for instance, reduce the amount of data. Um, a lot of algorithms that are typically used to do that are built into Kovice and exist as modules. For instance, uh, the simplification of triangular meshes or the generation of tetrahedral meshes, all these kinds of things are available as modules. And, um, and you can use this map editor on the desktop, and you can create your, your software. You can pretty much program visually and by creating a map. And all these little blocks here are the modules which have a certain function. And what you then do is you link them up. You, with the mouse, you connect the modules. You click on these little boxes at the top and bottom of the modules and link them up. And if you click on the little uh, book icon on the modules, you'll bring up a parameter window in which you can set the parameters for this particular module, which is, for instance, a file name. Or you can select the, um, the variables that you want to display. You can select whether you want to do vectors or scalars or uh, all kinds of things like that. There's a, a lot of uh, flexibility in this, in this parameter um, uh, setting, in the area of setting the parameters. What you also see in this picture is at the bottom of the Kovice window, there is a section in which you can see messages. And these messages are um, sort of the, uh, you can see error messages, you can see warnings. This is the output window for, in, in for text information, textual information that helps you know what's going on uh, inside of the module. And that can either be informative information or it can be information about, um, uh, that, can, that can warn you of a, pr a potential problem with the data in that you're trying to process. Or it can even be an error message that tells you that the module uh, isn't working because of something that's wrong with the data, where the expectation of the module doesn't match what you feed it, for instance, which is very typical. And you can then fix that and, and, uh, and get it to work. Now, in these networks of modules, um, basically what you'll do is you'll put the reader modules, the I.O. modules that read from disk at the top of your mesh. And then you'll, you'll connect the other modules down to these I.O. modules, and you'll, you'll filter the data. And eventually, you'll feed the data into a visualization module. And in the case here, uh, the visualization module is called renderer. And that's our um, Qt-based renderer. In this case, uh, um, you can see the renderer here in, a, in its own window. It's a 3D space that's being visualized, but it's a window in a 2D uh, window manager system. And there you can, this is very traditional 3D visualization. You have uh, controls to, to scale the data up and down. You have controls to move uh, the data set, to uh, rotate it. And you can do everything with the mouse and the buttons, the icons in the rendering window. All right. Now, uh, within Kovice, there's this collaborative aspect. and. Um, uh, the collaborative aspect really is in two domains. One aspect is in the visualization domain. I'm going to talk about that later. You can actually create applications that you run collaboratively. The other one is that you can network your, your, your module list. So the, the modules that we saw on the previous slide, they can all reside on different machines. So that you can have, for instance, if a collaborator has a simulation uh, running on a supercomputer in their own lab, then you can connect 
to the supercomputer, create your module that links to that supercomputer, and, and really run another copy of Covice on, the, say, the head node of the supercomputer, and link that into your Covice that you're running locally so that these, these modules can talk to each other. And that means that you can, for instance, run a simulation and, and get the simulation results in real time I as they are being uh, uh, calculated. You can get them into your visualization application and then potentially tweak some parameters and, and feed these parameters back to the simulation and change the parameters there to get updated values. I'll have an example uh, a little bit later. Now, the way this works is that we have two um, workstations involved. There's a local workstation, which is the one that we run our map editor on, that we sit at, and we run our visualization module on. And then there's going to be a remote workstation, which is connected to, say, the supercomputer. Or maybe it's not a supercomputer, but just a few computers, or even just one, that calculate the data. So this is all happening on the remote workstation. And then what you'll have to do is um, you'll run two instances of Covice. And what these will do is they'll have a, a request broker, the CRB, the Covice uh, request broker, is, um, runs on both of these systems. And that is the interface between them that talks to one another. And that's the interface with which the data is being exchanged. And then you can see there's a shared data space in both of these, in, uh, both of these systems. And the CRB is the one that, um, that coordinates the, the data transfer between them. And at the top of everything on the local, a workstation end is the, U, the user interface, the UI. That's what the user interacts with. And then there's a controller module which can, which can control not only the local system, but also the modules, uh, the remote modules. And that's important when you change parameters in your modules that you uh, want to change at the remote site, too. Then you can, you can do that in your module uh, configuration window. And that invokes the controller. And that controller has access to these modules at the remote site. And then these talk to the CRB to uh, transfer the data as needed. All right, so that's the architecture for, um, uh, say, remote simulation uh, jobs. And you can use multiple computers, by the way, to connect to one another. So you can have, say, multiple simulations running in different places. And they can all talk to each other and be controlled by your local workstation. Um, also, other features of Covice are that you have a large collection of um, input and output modules for uh, all kinds of different file formats. There are many file formats um, that are used in engineering, in the engineering world, and also in other domains, um, which are mostly 3D file formats. They're supported by Covice. And you'll find a reader that can read the file that's, that's put out by, by your uh, uh, simulation engine. But it's also a programmable environment. You can create your own modules. If you say, if you like to use your own simulation program that you wrote, then you can actually write a reader module for Covice that can read the output of your own simulation module. And, um, and that is one of, the, one of the benefits of Covice, that even though you have this, this application that's, that comes with this graphical environment and, and uh, the uh, uh, virtual reality renderers and all that, but it is very programmable. These modules are programmable. And we'll also see that there's a similar thing for the uh, virtual reality environment. So you can integrate your own custom code. You have to write it in C++. And there's ample documentation for how you write these modules. And that's all, that all comes with Covice. And, um, and it's, it's fairly easy to teach yourself how to use it. There's a tutorial that comes with it. Um, and there's reference manuals and a lot of documentation on these topics. Um, now, if you were to ask what systems you can run Covice on, um, then I can tell you that it runs on almost any uh, system that you might use. It was originally developed for uh, Linux, or uh, actually really Unix computers, for SGIs at first. And then um, once uh, Linux became more popular, it uh, was ported to Linux, which was fairly easy. And then it was also ported to Windows, um, which is a little bit more different. But Covice is now available for, for Windows and for Linux, and it runs really well in these environments. And, and I believe that there's also, um, there's also a, a Mac OS version, which works quite well. Um, but I have to admit that I haven't seen it running. But um, from what I hear, um, you should be able to download the Mac version as well and, uh, and do everything that you can do with the other 
versions of Covice for the other platforms um, in a Mac environment. Um, also, uh, for, for Linux versions, you will find 64-bit and 32-bit versions, and you'll find versions, binaries, for a variety of different um, uh, Linux flavors. So if you're going to download your Covice, and I'll show you from where in a minute, then make sure that you download the right version of it so that it'll run on your computer. Uh, here's another overview of um, the, the kinds of modules that we have available. Uh, we already went over that. We have the different categories. We have converter modules, filters, interpolators, I.O. modules, um, uh, mapping modules that um, uh, map one type of data to another. Uh, there's there are different renderers, um, really just two, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, there are simulation modules, which can connect to these simulation engines or even simulate directly in Covice. Um, and then there are uh, 3D uh, uh, tracers, for instance, for particle tracing. Uh, you can do streamlines. Um, you can do uh, um, uh, ribbons. You can do all, all kinds of things like that. And there's also example modules that show you how to write a module. Uh, when you now look at the virtual reality portion of Covice, um, there's a renderer which is called Open Cover. And this renderer Open Cover is the equivalent of what you saw on one of the previous slides where we saw the rendering, mod uh, the rendering module yes, for the desktop in this part of the screen, which I'll show you again. This one here. This is the renderer for the, for the desktop. Now, instead of the renderer for the desktop, you can load a renderer which is called Open Cover. And this renderer can, r can run on a virtual reality environment, for instance, the Star Cave, or it can run in any other cave environment if it's configured right. And um, you can also run it in, in untiled display vault or on an HMD or whichever environment you want to run it. Now, this open cover renderer is also a standalone application, which means that you can run open cover separately. And I want to say that about 90% of the applications in my lab are actually based on the standalone application of OpenCover, uh, and they run without the Covice map editor. And the reason for why this works is that OpenCover itself has a modular programming environment. There's a, we call them the plugins. Um, what's a module for Covice is a plugin for OpenCover, and the plugin allows you to write your own C++ code, uh, your own little application, and um, while doing that, you can leverage the uh, ability of the open cover framework. So you can write an application which you write as if you write it for a single uh, computer, but it'll actually run in a cluster environment just as well. Now, um, the open cover environment also supports a variety of input devices. And uh, this slide lists some of the input devices that it supports. And um, there's, for instance, the cubic mouse, if you have one of those. They're very popular in the oil and gas industry. It supports pinch gloves, um, which are gloves that you can, you can click by, by pinching your fingers. It supports the, um, the space ball or the, the various uh, derivatives that have been developed, and that neo wand as well, and also the, uh, the various magnetic, electromagnetic tracking devices. And I could add a lot more devices to this list. These are all 3D input controllers, which means you can, you can have, you'll have some kind of 3D device in your hand, and you can then click on something, drag something around in 3D space, um, perhaps even uh, head track so that you, you can move your head around. Uh, and that just depends on the particular device. But a lot of them, the typical ones, are supported by Covice. And if, if anything new comes out, uh, chances are that Covice is going to support it pretty soon. Or what you can also do is write the support by writing your own plugin. And that is one of the beauties of these plugins. They're very powerful. You can even use them to write a little driver for your uh, input device. And then these are the, while those are the input controllers, um, there are uh, two examples for output devices. Um, these are also supported by OpenCover. Uh, again, I went over that. Th th this is a cave. Down here, we have another type. It's, a, it's called the Cycloop, which is a, a single screen, a large screen with a projector, rear projected. And the whole setup is on wheels, so you can, you can just roll it into a conference room and do, and it also comes with, with optical tracking, so you can quickly do virtual reality in a conference room and uh, even put it on a truck and, and haul it to, uh, to a meeting if you really wanted to, or perhaps a, a trade show. 
So um, Kobi supports uh, all these input and output devices. And if you need more, then you can most likely just implement that by yourself without even having to touch the uh, core Kobi's functionality. Now, um, I mentioned these two renderers. And this, this is what they're called. The Qt render is the one that comes up on the desktop. Um, it comes up as a window with the interaction being by mouse and keyboard. You have all these icons. You can click on the icons. You can click inside this uh, black space, which is the, the rendering area. Um, and on the right-hand side, you'll see a list of the data objects that are loaded into the system. Whereas then, the, this, this is the Qt renderer for 2D desktop uh, visualization. And on the right-hand side, you can see the open cover renderer. That's just a black screen here. Uh, because what comes up is really just a black full screen window. That's what you want to see, that you have full screen um, uh, 3D. And uh, by omitting the, the menus and the, um, the window title bar and all that, you can, you can seamlessly concatenate these or um, uh, tile these uh, open cover windows together when you have a large tile display wall or uh, a cave, for instance. Um, and also then, of course, as soon as you don't render these menus and the title bars anymore, um, you don't have the 2D menus available anymore. And that's why OpenCover supports a, a pretty elaborate menuing system. It's very similar to the Java AWT and Swing environment. And you can see here, um, very faintly in the corner, you can see the main menu that comes up with OpenCover when you start up OpenCover. And, and off of that is um, where you start your own plugins. You can, when you write your plugin, you can add an entry to this menu, and then it'll come up, and you can click on it. And one of the, one of the beauties of Open Cover is that you can load multiple such plugins into the system at the same time. And the benefit of that is that you can, uh, you can access all these different applications when you need them. They all load up, but they don't necessarily load their data. They just start up so that there's a menu entry. But then when you need the module, then you can click on it, and you can load the data at that time without having to rerun the whole Kovice application. That makes it possible to quickly change between data sets and also quickly change between different applications, uh, which is particularly important if you're going to do demonstrations of, of your virtual reality system. Then you can run multiple demos in quick succession without having to rerun the application. Um, now for uh, open cover, I want to look at open cover a little bit more closely now. The open cover is, again, like I said, is one of Kovice's renderers, really one of two. Um, it's based on open scene graph. What that means is that the, uh, the language that we write our modules in and that open cover is implemented in um, uses the open scene graph API, the programming interface. Open scene graph is an open source library for 3D uh, programming. And it uh, uses a scene graph structure to store the data. And this is, has been very successful in, in many other visualization applications as well. And we're very happy with it. And it works really well in Kovice. So what you really do is when you write your plugin for Kovice, um, or for the uh, open cover render, I should say, when you write your plugin, then you really write it in C++ using open scene graph library calls. And open scene graph itself brings a variety of uh, data format loader. So if your data format isn't supported by a module in the Kovice map editor yet, you still have a chance that it's supported by open scene graph natively. And that's, for instance, uh, multigen. Um, it can read VRML, which we use as the main file format for 3D models. And it can, use, it can read a lot of other data formats, include, including uh, uh, OBJ and 3D Studio Max. Those are probably the most used other formats that we use in my lab. Um, so here, down here, you can see two pictures. This is on the right. That's, a, that's an airplane um, uh, displayed inside of OpenCover. And on the left, this is, by the way, the, the startup screen that OpenCover comes up with. And the text that's displayed here, by the way, can be configured in the config file. So you can, you can um, tailor it to your own lab so that uh, you have uh, that specifically looking like it comes out of your lab. Um, now I want to show you a couple of application examples. Uh, this is one where we do construction review. This was created um, by a, a graduate student, Andrew 
Barbosa over in the Structural Engineering Lab at UCSD, and we can see a, a part of the, the Bay Bridge, the San Francisco Bay Bridge here, um, as a CAD model. What I'm trying to demonstrate with this is that we can display complex uh, CAD models that we import from other CAD tools. We can import um, with a certain data flow process. We can conversion process. We can go from AutoCAD into our format. We can do 3D Studio Max. We've done Maya. Um, we've done MicroStation. Um, there are a lot of different formats that we ha already have figured out how to load in. Uh, and if there are any others, then there's probably some way to get the data into Covice. Um, this is another example. This example shows the uh, a link to a simulation. And um, I find this particularly interesting because it's a simulation with simulation feedback. And the way this works is we're looking at, this is a project with Daimler Chrysler that we've done in Stuttgart, um, in which we get the data for a car cabin. So we're looking at the inside of a car here. You can even see a little dummy here sitting at the steering wheel. And um, we can see the windows and, and pretty much everything that's inside of the car, but nothing that's outside of it, that's outside the interior part. Now, what we also have for data is a simulation which simulates the airflow that comes out of the, out of the vent um, outlets the, that you can see indicated here with little arrows, the green arrows. And what that means is that you can actually simulate the air conditioning system inside this car and how fast and where the cold air that comes out of the vents um, goes and how it, how it develops over time, how it, how it fills all the little spaces in the car. And that can be important because the goal is obviously that when, you, when you're in a hot um, environment, you park your car and then you get in the car, you want to cool it down, you want to cool it as fast as possible. And maybe you don't want to cool the whole interior as fast as possible, but in particular the areas that are around the driver. So by doing the simulation, you can see how, where this cold air develops first. And by linking back to the simulation from the visualization, what you can do is you can manipulate these vent outlets. And you can manipulate not only the, the strength, which is the, like the, um, when you turn up the, the air in your car, um, but you can also manipulate the, the direction that they blow into. That's what you, and you have in your car, too, where you can we usually have a left and right and up and down. And that you can do here as well. And then the information, when you, when you manipulate these, these vector arrows here, the information goes back to the simulation. And the simulation then updates the, the new air temperatures, the volume of air inside the car, sends it back over to the visualization. And then you can see in your cutting plane here, or in, in this in picture, we also have some streamlines where we show how the air flows. And you can see that in, in real time or with, with a short delay, with just seconds delay. Um, so that's a beautiful application for simulation steering. Um, if you're going to now run your own Covice, a copy of Covice to test some of these features out, I do want to encourage you to do that. Then you are going to, once you can run your map editor, um, you can run examples. And you'll find, for instance, a, uh, with this sequence, you go to Open and then select Tutorial and select this file. Uh, tutorial pressure to new .net. The uh, .net is the end ending of uh, these these map networks of modules. That's just a, a text file that that tells the system about the modules that are supposed to be loaded. Um, and by doing that, you can it brings up the renderer too, and then you see the rendering window, and you should see this this exhaust uh, set up there. Um, that's a sample data set, and then you can you can play with the various parameters in the ISO surface here or the um, the, uh, the hull, the, the surface off the data um, that you can generate with the domain surface module. So this is an example for how you um, can get started. And, uh, and if you're going to do that, then you will need a license for Covice. Um, for licensing, I just want to say that Covice is uh, by, in by itself a commercial product. But luckily, since it was developed at a university, there is an agreement in place with the company that sells Covice that um, academic institutions and not-for-profit institutions can use Covice for free. And you can, so you can get a license for free. And, uh, and you can ap apply for that by contacting the HLRS, or you can contact me, and I'll, I'll coordinate. There's also a, a very fast way to get a two-week 
license um, uh, just directly off the website. And how do you get the software? You go to this URL. Um, there's the Kovice Home is the first URL. That's the homepage for it at the HLRS um, Center. That's at the University of Stuttgart, but no worries, the page is in English. Um, there's also another location, which is Vicenso, which is the company that sells Kovice. But if you go there, you won't find a downloadable version. They, they sell their product. Um, so if you're going to get the free version of it, then you have to go to the academic site um, at HLRS. And, uh, and you'll find the download link at this, at this first link. But if you can't wait, then you can click on the second one here, um, which is the, the direct link to the download page. And there you'll find the list of operating systems that are supported. And you just click on your uh, whichever version of um, uh, Kovice you need for your, for your specific operating system. So this is what I want to leave you with at, in this lecture number one. And um, uh, next time, we're going to look more closely at how you use Kovice to create your own applications. So thank you very much. And I will see you in the next lecture.